Want to get that ultra glossy, professional looking finish in your wood projects? We'll show you how after this. I'm Kyle from Adventures at Home and in this video we're going to show you how to use two-part epoxy to get that ultra clear, ultra gloss finish on your projects. So for this project we have a coffee table with some one inch thick oak top on it and it's been pre-stained and pre-finished, pre-sanded, all of that. So it's ready to go for its final coat. And because it is a coffee table we want that ultra durable finish so we're going to use the ultra thick um, two-part epoxy finish and the stuff is kind of contrary to what you'll read online it's kind of a pain to work with but the results are worth it especially if you're, it's going to be for like a tabletop or a countertop or something like that this stuff is ultra durable it's way more UV resistant than polyurethane and it holds up a lot better if someone doesn't use a coaster on it or what what have you and if the finish gets nicked or something, it's a lot easier to just sand it down a little bit and put another layer of this on to refinish it. So even if you do have to refinish it, it'll last a lot longer and be a lot less work to keep the finish looking great. So you'll see here we have two parts. This stuff comes, this is the gallon size. Uh, it's, that's another setback, it's quite pricey. The gallon um, of this stuff is probably around $70. So it comes with the clear resin and then a hardener. So you're gonna mix these in a 50-50 mix by volume. So we're not gonna show you right now how we're gonna do that. I have, for the first step in this video, I've got a pre-mix set. And one of the tips for this is, because this is a large table and the oak is quite porous, we're actually gonna put a thin coat on before we do the final flood coat. And that makes a huge difference getting all the air bubbles out of it. And we do have a couple of spots where there's a couple of dents in the wood. And we're going to fill those with this thin coat first. And then when we do the flood coat, it'll be much easier to get that perfect finish that you want. So when we do the flood coat, I'll actually show you. We actually do mix this by weight. It says to do it 50-50 by volume. But we just do a quick calculation to get it by weight and we put it, use it on a kitchen scale and then we can get it exact without having to waste another one of these containers measuring them out 50-50. So the first step is going to be to get your surface dust free. You want all dust, debris, everything off of your surface. So we've already wiped this down with a spray cleaner and we've let this sit for about 24 hours to make sure all the moisture is off of it. Next step, right before you finish it, is just going to be to take a tack cloth. If you don't know what a tack cloth is, it looks like cheesecloth, but it's just got a tack to it, and it's just going to remove any dust and particles from the surface. So just give this whole, your whole surface a good wipe down. All right, now when you're ready to apply your thin coat, this is going to be a lot different than the flood coat that you're going to apply. So when you do the thin coat, first just identify any problem areas that you think you might have. So right here we just have a little nick where some of the grain ripped out. And there might be, I was looking over this earlier, and I think this was the only major problem that we're going to have to do this on. But just take some of your resin, give it a quick stir again. Now you do have a pretty good working time with this stuff. You have about 30 minutes before it sets. So there's no need to rush. But at the same time, when you're done, don't go back and keep trying to fix stuff. This stuff will um, kind of set and fix itself as you go. So and working with it too much will cause the uh, final product to not look as well. So all you're going to do is identify your problem spot. And you're just going to take a little epoxy and just pour it right into that. And it can be too much, too little, just as long as it starts to fill. If it is too little, you'll just catch that again. And if it is too much, you're going to wipe it when you pour the thin coat on anyway. So just pour it, and that's going to start filling that crack. So when you go to wipe your final thin coat on, it doesn't suck it all in, and you're still left with an indent. 
So to apply this, all you're going to do is just pour this in a pattern all across the wood. As you can tell, this isn't a whole lot of epoxy for this. There's going to be way more when we do the flood coat. We are just going to spread this on really thin for right now. So make sure you get all of it out of that container. This stuff is pricey, so use it all. You can set that aside, can't use this again. So now to spread out the thin coat, I just prefer to use one of these foam brushes. All you're gonna do is spread it and just get everything covered nice and thin. So here's the other nick that I thought I found that I didn't see, so I'm just going to go ahead and dab some extra epoxy in there. And then when I'm all done spreading this, I'll just come back and make sure that these two cracks filled in. So then the last thing that you're going to do for when you do the actual flood coat, the torch is going to come in real handy. That's how you get the bubbles to raise to the surface. But for this, because it's so thin, in theory, all the bubbles should be able to raise out and pop themselves. But where you did apply in these nicks right here, the epoxy is going to be too thick. So you just want to hit them with a little bit of gentle heat and just see if any bubbles start rising. If you don't get any bubbles, stop right away and just discontinue. It's not necessary. You were able to work all those out yourself. If you do, you can just gently heat it and then I'll move to the other one and then come back um, just to get some of the bubbles out. But we'll see if it's necessary. So we weren't getting any bubbles, so that's good. So that means we got all the air bubbles out of these. And with a thin coat, you're not gonna have to do anything else. You're gonna leave it sit. But one of the keys is you want this to be dust free. So right now we're planning on going outside and doing some stuff for a couple hours. So no one's gonna be in the house. We shouldn't have any dust moving around. So we're gonna let this sit for a, little, for a few hours while it just hardens up a little bit. And then we're actually going to move it into another room and we're going to leave the door closed in there and no one goes in there for about 24 hours just so we don't get any dust movement in that room. And we don't have the furnace on in there or the air conditioning or any of the air vents. So none of the, and I mean, it seems like a lot just to get a uh, clear coat on this, but not having any dust movement around this is going to make a huge difference in the final product. So we'll see you in about 48 hours when we do the flood coat. All right, now that our thin coat has had about 72 hours to harden, we're ready to get started with our flood coat. So because we did let the thin coat fully harden, we're going to have to rough it up just a little bit with some 320 grit sandpaper just so that the flood coat adheres better to the thin coat underneath. All right, now we'll just take some acetone and wipe it down to clean it off.
All right, now that this tabletop is ready, we can get our mix ready to go. And this time I promise you guys, we're gonna show you how we do our mix by weight. Now we calculate that out so we can get it exact rather than trying to pour it and do it by volume, which is a little more difficult to get perfectly accurate. So, what we got here, so our table dimensions are 24, by 44 inches so that'll give us a thousand fifty six inches squared which is seven point three four feet squared now if your resin however much it'll do ours will do thirty two square feet per gallon and we have a gallon of resin so we can figure out that we need 0.23 gallons Convert that to ounces. We need approximately 30 ounces of resin per the manufacturer's recommendation for how much it'll cover. And we're gonna add about 5% to that just for good measure so we don't run out during our pour. So we're gonna end up wanting 32 ounces of each. Or 32 ounces total, or 16 ounces of resin and 16 ounces of hardener. So now we know the density of the resin is 2.25 grams per milliliter and the density of the hardener is 0.94 grams per milliliter and we can go ahead and convert that so we know that we're going to need 1065 grams of resin and 445 grams of hardener <clears throat> so we can just take our kitchen scale we can set that um, down we're going to take our cup you are going to need two of these, so make sure you have more than one on hand. Go ahead and set that on the scale and zero it out. All right. Now we're going to take our resin. All right, we've got the desired amount there. And now we can go ahead and measure out our hardener next. All right, looks good. Now we'll fast forward this next part for you, but it is recommended with the stuff that we're using that you stir it for six full minutes in the first container, you transfer it to the second container and stir it for another six minutes. So we'll see you in 12 minutes. All right, our 12 minutes of mixing are up, so we're almost ready to pour. Just one or two more things to do before we can get to pouring the sand. We're gonna take a tack cloth and just give everything one final wipe to get all of the dust off. You want to be super dust conscious when you're doing this. It kind of seems over the top, all these different measures, but the final product is going to be worth it. And if you don't, the dust is really going to show through or any dirt that you do have in here is really going to stand out in the final product. And it's also a good idea. We're going to be using the scraper to spread it out. Give that a wipe down too, get all the dust off that. And I go so far as to just give my hands a quick wipe. All 
And when we did bring this table out, we leveled everything on shims, so everything should be perfectly level. We're just gonna go ahead and double check everything to make sure it looks good. Everything still is looking great. And one thing that we didn't show you is underneath our frame, we laid down freezer paper, gloss side up, and we find that that's the best for catching all the drips and it's the most cost effective way to do it instead of laying down um, like painters uh, painters tarp or something like that um, just regular old the big rolls of freezer paper that you can buy at walmart or any big box store pretty much just lay um, about two sheets thick with the glossy side up that should catch all your drips this is going to drip a lot so as we start doing this don't worry about it it's meant to self level so it is going to flow off the edges Now we can give this one good final stir. And we can start pouring this on. And go ahead and make sure that you get everything out of that container. Even if it all drips off the edge, it's better that you get it out with how expensive this stuff is. And it's going to start to harden right away in the container after you pour it out. So it's not like you can go back and get a couple extra drops if you need it after you're done working. Set this aside. All right, now we can take our scraper and just start spreading this stuff out. There's no real science to it. Just try and get a somewhat even coat on everything. And try not to push it off the edges yet. Kind of work it towards the edge and then back towards the center and so on until you get an even coat. So now as you're starting to get everything with a nice coat leveled out, now you can start working towards the edges just let any excess just push down and let it drip off to the side. Don't worry about the drips for right now. You're going to go back and touch those up once you get the top all straightened out. If you do notice, you did get a piece of something in there while you're working. Just dig it out. and smooth it back over. So if you do have any drips down the side, it will kind of um, even itself out as it cures, but it is much better if you can smooth some of those out just so you don't have run into any problems down the road with any of those. Just take your time. You get about half an hour of working time with this before it starts to get kind of tacky on you. Once you have everything worked out pretty well, um, don't overwork it. Um, you can kind of drive yourself nuts trying to clean everything up. 
let the great self-leveling that this product is made for do its job and once you have it pretty close let the product do it itself while it works or while it cures <clears throat> so the last step is we're just going to take a torch and we have a few bubbles in here and you're just going to lightly heat this and the heat will cause the bubbles to raise to the surface and pop it's going to leave a little indentation but don't be worried the self-leveling is just going to take care of that as this cures so and it, don't get it too hot because you can um, overheat this and you can burn it so just be real gentle and just slowly let the bubbles pop on their own You guys can see all it takes is a real light tap of the heat just to get near to the bubble and they pop right away. So just kind of flick of the wrist towards the bubbles and they come right to the surface and pop and then they level themselves right back out. So if you notice I keep moving around I don't I still got a few more bubbles over here, but now I'll move down here to do it so I don't heat up one spot too much at a time. It's kind of like playing whack-a-mole except pop the bubble. It's really nice if you've got a light right above you as you're working. You can the surface will shine like glass once you have all the bubbles out. And if you don't have them all out yet, you can definitely see them with the direct light on it. All right, so don't overwork it, just like I said before. So because we did do that thin coat, you're not gonna get any bubbles rising up from the um, surface of the wood yet. So as long as you pop a lot of the main bubbles, any of the tiny little trapped ones are gonna work themselves out as this cures. So don't overdo it. You can definitely hurt yourself if you try and work with this stuff until it's past the point where it's starting to cure and then you can really mess up the self-leveling feature of this. So it's time to let this sit for a little while. We're gonna leave it right here where it's nice and level um, for about 24 hours. And then we're gonna move it into another room where it's not gonna be disturbed with a dehumidifier to finish curing. Um, this does have to stay above 75 degrees the whole time it cures. So make sure you don't have that AC cranked or anything in the house. And definitely don't do this outside in winter. And we did the, do this in the basement, so we're going to go upstairs and be done down here for the night. And we're going to try and have very little to no air movement down here while this cures so we don't get any dust kicked up. All right, I'll see you when it's cured and we can take a look at the final product. All right, guys, we're back after 72 hours of letting this cure. And man, does it pop. This turned out awesome. So a little bit of hard work and you can get that ultimate finish that you want on your projects. And this is gonna be super durable and more UV resistant than just doing a polyurethane coat. So hopefully some of our tips and tricks will help you when you wanna do this finish on your projects. It does seem a little bit tedious, but the end result is worth it, especially when you're doing a tabletop like this one. So if you liked our content, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to keep seeing more like this, hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate all your support. And until next video, I'm Kyle, helping you create your own adventure at home.